this beautiful tree is a type of eucalyptus growing on the southern coastline of Tasmania. Now, drawing trees in an advanced way, it's not so much that we use a different way of drawing the tree, it's simply that a more complex tree demands more of us in applying the basic principles. And I thought this was a good tree because it's a tree that is quite characteristic of its type. It's not a generic blob, mop of foliage with a trunk sticking out of it. So therefore it's a challenging tree because there's a lot more detail to get right and there's a lot more depth that we see because we look through the canopy. So there are canopies, small canopies coming towards us and going away from us, going above and going through. And we therefore want to create marks that will capture this. Now you'll see what I'm doing so far is I'm just putting some marks on the paper to try and define where these clumps are. Now, of course, this doesn't have to be exact, but if we vary what we're drawing too much from our photo, then it's not going to look the same as our reference. And if there were characteristics of how this tree looked in our reference that made us really want to capture it, we want to capture those characteristics. I find it best to start with the, the canopy, either in the middle or at the top, and then basically work down the tree from there. Because it's really the canopy which is the dominant visual part of the tree. So we want to get these, these smaller canopies, these bunches of leaves on the ends of individual branches in place. I'm now putting a few of the branches in, mostly because I want to start to create the effect of the tree. Now I'm not trying to particularly draw any individual branches except possibly the main looking ones. But what I do want to do is to create the same effect of the branches. Branching, the way the branches grow and move and thicken or thin out or divide or twist is just as characteristic of an individual tree as the leaves are and the way the leaves hang on the branches, whether they go up as in lots of trees or whether they hang down loose as in most eucalypts or something in between. Now, eucalyptus leaves do hang downwards very much, and so I want to have lines, marks that capture that downward hanging effect. And therefore, the tops of my canopies, are they're marks, they're not lines, they're not a hard edge because that's not what we have. But there are marks trying to create a relatively smoother looking line than what we get at the base of the canopies, where there is a much more jagged effect because we're looking at the long ends of the eucalypts pointing downwards. So I'm not trying to draw leaves though, I'm trying to draw the effect of the leaves. I'm not wanting any of my individual lines that I'm hatching on the lower half of the canopies to look or feel like separate leaves. I want the sense to be still that we're looking at the whole canopy with these marks or each individual canopy. Now you can see with the branches, I continue to move the branches down as I draw the effect of the canopies. And where there are canopies behind canopies that are catching the shade in a certain way, I make sure I do more line work, more hatching to make those darker. And this starts now to give me a sense of three dimensions with the tree. And I find it important to try and do that relatively early because it helps me not to get lost. It helps me to locate the canopy I'm working on with that canopy in the reference. If I've got some lighter and darker areas just to help navigate by quickly as I glance at the drawing, I have a point of contact on the drawing and the reference that I can get to easily, such as that dark section above. And now I'm drawing more branches. I'm going down to the lower section. Now look particularly at the way I'm drawing these branches. It might look a bit clumsy at the moment, but eucalyptus branches bend and twist and turn in all sorts of ways for all sorts of reasons. They often, they often break and regrow and that gives them a good change of direction at that point. And they also can grow very long, which means they can grow long upwards or outwards towards us. 
really they can grow very long in any one of 360 degrees. And so we want to capture this, this sparse but circular sense of the tree shape. And so I'm paying particular attention to the branches in the reference before I start to draw them. But then I'm more trying to capture the, the feel of the way they twist and turn and move and branch, not the exactness. Because it's really, with trees, I think best to be aiming to draw the effect. Once we try and draw the actual details, particularly on a scale such as this, it can be very hard simply to fit the detail in and then suddenly our branches look too thick. Notice that I draw the branches in sections. I don't draw great long snakes up one side then down the other. I find that's a very difficult way to get a realistic look. It's also a very difficult way to keep the branch the same thickness or for it to get thicker in the right proportion at the right time. Whereas drawing each branch section by section, it's much easier, particularly when we want really thin branches or really thin trunks because of the size of our drawing. It's much easier to get that just drawing it section by section. And at the end, I think it's a very effective looking style. Stylistically, it blends in well with how the canopies look. But by starting with the canopies, it lets me get the relative width of the branches much more accurate. When we start at the bottom and work up and work up, it's easy to start too thick, our branches too thick, and then when we get to the canopy, there's not enough space, if you like, hidden behind the leaves for those thick branches that go into the canopy to end up in very fine twigs with the leaves on the end. And so it looks a bit artificial. So this is a great way to make sure we have nice, thin, fine branches, twigs at the very end, and they thicken in the right proportion as they move down towards the trunk. And with the trunk particularly, if the trunk is at an angle, it's great to capture the angle. One of the issues I often see with trees is that the really interesting twists and turns of the branches end up for some reason being flattened somewhat and visually it usually makes a much less engaging picture. Now one important thing with any tree we draw, however difficult or straightforward it might be, is to take note of where is the sun coming from and in this case the sun's coming down pr pretty much from the top but it's sort of from the top to the left hand side, which means that the, the back, the lower parts and the particularly the lower right hand side are more likely to be in shade or shadow. And so making more effort to have a general sense of the tree is going to be darker, the lines will be heavier, the effect will be a little bit blacker on the lower right section of our tree compared to the upper left section of our tree which is the part that's most in light. And this is where when we work across the whole drawing, it's not just looking at the little part we're drawing right now, but I need to be looking across the overall effect and am I getting the balance of values of lights and darks correct. I don't want to go too dark too quickly. But equally, as I said before, getting a little bit of dark value in place early can just help us as a navigation point, like a lighthouse on our drawing that we can easily find and locate on our reference. Not just for speed, but actually for accuracy. It's really easy to put a clump of leaves in the wrong place in the mapping out stage. Now, a tree such as this is a bit of a time commitment. I'm using a 0 0.3 millimeter pen this took me about 35 minutes to draw in real time. So you're watching this pretty much at double speed. And so now you see me trying to see where are there branches that we see in front of canopies and so forth. Often don't draw by drawing the object, but we can draw by the negative spacing. We can draw by drawing the gap or the shape between things. So sometimes when I'm drawing branches, I'll look at the shape between the branches and I'll see 
can I draw that? Will that help me to put the branches in the right place? If I create this shape, rather than try and draw the branches one by one, but looking at the pattern the branches make as a whole, try and draw that pattern. That can be a very helpful way of getting a more realistic effect, something that captures the idiosyncrasies of the reference. So working now on these bunches of leaves that are behind the branching of the closer ones. And you can see with the negative spacing, I often come up with the line work quite thick, quite close, quite dense, quite black in effect, right up to the branches. And then I leave a gap to show the branch going through it. Now, when I do this, I'm not particularly paying attention to what the actual branch is looking like, whether there's light on it, whether it's catching the light or not, because sometimes I disrupt that, that strictly realistic point of view just to give a stronger sense of what's happening, just to give the eyes a, a sense of there's a branch moving in front of that foliage. And if I were to render the value as it is in the reference, it would just get lost and it would just be a dark blob. And very much in the reference photo, we can see a lot of branching happening, even in front of or behind the canopies. And so I want that to come across in my drawing as well. So now I'm establishing these right-hand side ones. Again, we pay particular attention with trees to the silhouette edge. We want to capture the feel of it. It would have been very easy just to have run a straight line around in a, a sort of half oval, wobbly half oval shape, but it would have been too strong a look. The effect would have been too geometric, too regular. And the other thing I'm trying to create here is a sense of three dimensions, a sense of some of this tree is coming towards me and some of this tree is pushing backwards. And I had intended to partly do that by switching to a 0.2 millimeter pen for the further parts of the canopy. But I decided in the end just to use the one pen. It's a good technique to develop to try and get these three dimensional effects just using the one pen. Although it is easier if we switch. So working on the edges of our tree now. And again, particularly in spots such as this lower right hand side, where some of these canopies become very small, we want to capture that. We don't want to do large clumping canopies that really envelop a lot of smaller ones because it's the canopies getting smaller towards the end of the branches, particularly with eucalypts, the lower branches, that is part of the characteristic look, the, the visual give away that this is a eucalyptus. And so we want to make sure we get that, that this, this sense of the trees branching out thinner and thinner, smaller and smaller, with more and more space between what's there. And so now I want to put the tree in context. I ummed and out about putting the scenery in. Look, with the little jetty at the, the left and that, that wharf pole at the front and the the bit of the bay and the headland behind. It is quite a nice scene, but because it is a drawing of a tree, I just thought I wanted to highlight the actual tree more because it is more a specimen tree in terms of this video rather than a scene. So I've decided I'm just going to put this foliage that's around the base of the tree and just a bit behind it. Now that dark foliage that's behind the tree. I, I should have done that a bit higher. It's a bit low down and I do actually push it up a bit further in a moment. This is a really fun stage of the tree but it's important to keep paying attention right to the end and referring to the reference not to go on autopilot and just start to do more line work the way we've been doing it because what ends up happening is it all ends up getting overworked and it becomes harder to recognize what's going on to make sense of the canopies and the shapes and the three dimensions and we can easily lose 
all the distinctive characteristics of our tree. So I'm deliberately keeping this section even looser than the tree because I do want the tree to attract the attention primarily. But this also, I hope, gives us a sense of the, the scale of the tree. It's not a, a large tree, it's not a small tree, it's a nice, moderately sized tree. And then I just bring a few marks forward a little bit to give us a sense of space between us and the tree and being very careful of foreshortening the principles of foreshortening when we do anything on the ground. And now I just add a few bit more hatching on some of the branches to indicate the fact that the, the shade and the shadows aren't equal. Some parts, because of the bends of the branches, end up attracting more or less shadow. Now I just bump up this dark section a little bit. Helpful or not, I don't know. And I realise that the value of that the branches are darker beneath. And so now I correct the value with some more lines. I think we're getting pretty close to it being done. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. Look, I hope you found this helpful. This photo is on my channel community page, so why not have a go drawing it yourself? But look, don't draw along with me and don't draw looking at my drawing. But rather, watch the video, understand my thinking of what I'm doing, and then use the reference to make your own drawing. And then after that, you can compare your drawing with my drawing and see where we were similar, where we were different. And then you could even draw it again with perhaps a clearer idea of exactly what you're wanting to achieve, the effect you're trying to create and the marks that will best create them. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.